Yo, what's poppin' my people? It's your boy Crooks, you're great, back at you guys with another banger of a UFC 4 video. And in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to incorporate my style of boxing into your guys' style of gameplay against any level of fighter that you guys go up against. So as you guys can see, the first fighter we're going up against is a Division 13 Jared Cannonier, and we're using Nick Diaz here in middleweight. Now, the first thing that you guys will see me do a lot of the time is you guys will see me pop out jabs. I like to try to find my range with the jab and kind of just base everything I do uh, off of that. So you see, I'm trying to back him up here. We've already got him up against the cage and he's trying to circle off. He's using the teep kicks, using the kicks to the leg, the calf kicks to the leg that Jared Cannonier does have. So we're, we're backing him up. Nice front kick right there. So that lets me know. And I'm just trying to get a read for him in the first round. So I'd highly recommend that you guys do this if you guys are going to be trying to box like I do. Is try to get a read for your opponent in the first round. Even if it is only a three rounder, I'd highly recommend you do it. So here we're just taking our time, still popping that jab out. Hit him with a good slip straight. Trying to launch off combinations when he's standing stationary. And then mixing it up to the body as well. So you guys will see me do that a lot in this fight. We're double jabbing. Slipped straight in right there. He misses on the knee. He's going with the elbows. Nice jab stopped us in our tracks. But you see how my pressure is consistent. I'm not, I'm not always launching off combinations to try to break somebody's block. I'm just touching his block, touching his block with the jab, touching it, and then just basing everything that I do off of that jab. So there he's launching off head kick. So he is launching off kick. So that's a read that I can make. If he misses on the kick, we can overhand him like we did just a little bit ago. Keeping him honest with that jab. He's teep kicking. Hit him with a good slip hook. Launch that four piece off. Kind of just mixing him up right here. Taking our time. Hit him with a good jab uppercut on that missed time body kick that he threw. And now you see I'm just pouring on the pressure. And I'm only going with two to three strike combinations. You don't see me really over committing on my combinations. I'm just keeping it short and sweet. But I'm getting a lot of damage off. So here we're just taking our time. Nice calf kick right there by him. And you see how I'm just pressuring him. Trying to make him feel uncomfortable. And if you're going to be boxing with the style that you guys see me use. You have to make your opponent feel uncomfortable. As well as mix up high low. So you guys see I'm starting to break that block down just a little bit. He's making a lot of mistakes and missing on strikes. And when he does. We're right up on top of him to make him pay. And that's what pressure does. That should be the main reason why you're using pressure in UFC 4. You want to pressure your opponent into making a mistake. So that way you can capitalize on it. So here we're mixing up high low to the body. And we're getting some good results. But that leg health is a little bit low. But I am going to be willing to trade leg health for head health. And that's really what we're doing here. And I'm okay with that. Because I can switch to orthodox at any time. And my legs will be good to go. Shoots for a takedown right there. And he is going to be able to get it, but that's the end of the first round. Now, that's a very, very solid way to use boxing, the style of boxing that I use in the first round. I won that round, even though the leg health is really low. I did win that round, and in a three-round fight, every round is important. Because if I get two rounds and then we go into the third round, he has to press forward and really get out of his element to try to get a finish. So here he doesn't want to touch gloves, and we're back underway. Now we're spacing it out just a little bit. You see me starting to feint off now because he knows that pressure is coming. So you can start to utilize feints when you've established pressure. And now you see me going to the body a lot. I'm not just head hunting. I'm dipping down low with the body, with the body jab. We heard him right there. We have him on the ropes, but we're not going for that finish on the cage right there. We're trying to go for the clean KO. Hit him with a good straight, and now we're just smothering him with this pressure. Still utilizing that jab, mixing it up. Get that four-piece combination, drop him right there. Now he's in all sorts of trouble. He's still eating the jab straight to the block. So I know that block health is going to be a little bit lower. Hit him with a clean overhand counter off the missed kick, like we did earlier as well. Hit him with the clean pull counter uppercut to get the job done. And that's the way you want to do it against Division 13, guys. But with that being said, let's go ahead and step it up and jump up to the higher divisions here in the next video that I have for you guys right here. Now, here we are, guys. 
we're going up against a Division 17 meta Robert Whitaker. Now, you guys are going to get this matchup a lot, ladies and gentlemen, just because a lot of people don't like fighting with anybody other than Robert Whitaker in this weight class. So this might make for a little bit more of a challenge. We touch gloves and we're back underway. Now, Robert Whitaker does have the faster footwork than Jared Cannonier, and he also has a more solid chin, so we just need to be aware of that. But still, the strategy is the same. We're trying to pressure with that jab, fainting, jabbing to the head and to the body, just mixing it up, trying to give him a different look. So you see, I'm just taking my time, catching right there with double hooks as he made a mistake. And that's why you want to apply that pressure. Get your opponent to make a mistake, and you can get that clean knockdown like we did early in this round already. So this guy's missing on shots. We're popping out the double jabs, trying to catch him with a slip straight. Double jabbing into a straight right there, catching with a clean two-piece, and then we were able to block. Now, a tip and a trick that I'm going to give you guys as well is if you guys are having trouble going to the body, lower the block health first. You guys will see me do uh, this a lot, as well as you guys heard Pry say this about me in our fights as we stunned him right there with a clean combination. Hits us with a clean pull counter uppercut right there. Did a lot of damage. But I tend to try to go to the body after I overload the block because your opponent will start to try to expect a block to come out or a block breaking combination to come out and then the body will be open and free game as well as you can occasionally catch him in a slip like right there so highly highly would recommend you guys use that so here we're just taking our time double jabbing he missed on the slip uh, on the slip hook catch him right there with a good jab hook as his chin health is low keeping that pressure on him going high low to the body hit him with a clean pull counter straight he misses on the slip hook catching him with a three piece hurting him and now we're just smothering him right there. And he keeps throwing that same combination that ends in an uppercut. So we might be able to get a pull, uh, a pull counter on it. So just taking our time, not rushing, but still applying that pressure like crazy. See, so we're just taking our time. He's popping out the straights. There is that pull counter uppercut. Gets us that knockdown that I told you guys we were looking for. Now he's in all sorts of trouble. And we're able to get that clean clean KO with Nick Diaz against the Division 17 Robert Whitaker. But with that being said, let's jump into the last fight that I do have for you guys here on the video. <clears throat> now here we are guys, we are going up against a Division 20 Robert Whitaker. And this guy is actually somebody that I know really, really well. He's no scrub. He's beaten me five times as you guys can see. Uh, he's actually in primetime MMA as well. So I know I know this guy pretty, pretty well. He's showing respect. I actually didn't see that. So respect to him if he's watching the video. Touch gloves and we're back underway. Now you guys see immediately we're back on the pressure. We're still popping out that jab. But you see he's trying to do the same thing. He's trying to jab and move backwards. Make him pay right there off of the missed body hook. Just taking our time. Not over committing on shots. Nice teep kick to the body right there. Gains him a little bit of pressure. We go down to the body, hit him with a clean block counter uppercut right there. Hit him with a good slip straight. Now we're paying, playing at a pace that I love to play at. Very, very reactionary. So we're still going down to the jab, to the body with a nice jab. Catch him with a good double jab straight. Hit him with a clean hook uppercut. Gets us a drop right there. Now we're in a very, very good spot. Have him backed up to the cage. Smothering him, he hit us with a clean pull counter elbow right there. Or not a clean pull counter elbow, but a spinning elbow. We faint to the body just to see if he's going to go with the uppercut. And now as I'm doing it, as you get better and better and better with uh, this style of boxing, you're going to be able to make cleaner reads and faster reads. So that's what I'm doing here. We're just making quicker reads. We're catching him with combinations. Caught him with that uppercut right there. Caught that body kick. Still on the pressure. Nice slip counter right there by him, though. Need to be careful not to eat too many of those of Robert Whitaker. So now he's starting to try to pressure. So we're regaining the middle of the octagon right there. Just taking our time, though. Still trying to read out what we're doing. What he's trying to do to us. Catch him. Oh, he caught us with the with the uh, with the uppercut to the body, and it was able to stun us. But we come right back, get another knockdown right there. Now he's in trouble. Hits us with a with a clean spin elbow, though. Hey, very very reactionary gameplay. You could get rocked. 
So we just need to recover real quick. And we do so. Just trying to take our time. We did land some good damaging shots, but he did as well and caught us with an uppercut as we ducked right there. So we need to try to pull. Here, hit him with a clean slip counter uppercut. We have him in all sorts of trouble. And we're able to get him out of there with the damage in the first round with Nick Diaz right there. But when you use my style of boxing, hey, that's what you can do. But I hope you guys were able are able to use some of the tips that I did give you guys here in this video to incorporate the pressure boxing style into your guys' gameplay. And if this video did help you guys out, make sure to slap that subscribe button if you're new, as well as slap that like button. And drop a comment in the comment section if this did ha help you guys, or if you guys have any questions on what I broke down in this video, I'd be more than happy to, uh, to tell you guys or go more in depth, maybe in a later video about what I was talking about uh, in this fight. But until the next video, guys, take it easy, be safe, enjoy the rest of your guys' day, afternoon, evening, depending on where you guys are watching from this from, and I'll see you guys in the next video.